Call to order. Um, and no, I don't mean your dinner order. All right, everybody. So we'll get uh, started here. Welcome. Uh, I saw we have a couple people online as well. Um, so welcome everybody for uh, our June meeting. I wasn't able to make it last month. I had to go up to Rochester to pick my youngest up from college. So, but what that also means is finally I'll get some videos edited that I put up on our YouTube site because she's my video editor. <laughs> <laughs> but she does a lot of editing for another group. She's several groups she's part of, so gotten very good at it. Um, we have any visitors with us tonight? Oh, yes, we do. There you are. That's right. You, Randy, was talking with you guys about that earlier. Uh, and you are? Gene. Gene. Sam's wife. Sam's. This, this is Sam. This is Sam, yeah. yeah. And, and then, uh, he brought the lake. Um, I do more turning than he does. Nice. <laughs> so you don't have his and hers yet? Not yet. Not yet. Well, if you go out to the front here, <laughs> except you don't, they, that's the only thing you don't get a club discount on. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, there's that too. Um, hey, well, welcome. And uh, Randy, did you get her information already? No, I did not. All right. Randy will get your information from so we make a note. Um, speaking of Randy, secretary. That's you. The meeting minutes were distributed by email uh, only yesterday. Most to approve. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that they care of meeting minutes. <laughs> All in favor? Uh, yep. All right. Now it's official. Um, I did not see did not see Bob here tonight. Yeah, did, did you hear anything from Bob, Randy? Uh, yes, I did. He said he was probably coming in the Zoom. Okay. Do you uh, see him in the gallery up there? He's not in, he's not in there. All right, we'll, we'll wait. We'll see if we get something from him and we'll instead mm -hmm. skip over uh, Tom. Yes. Program. Uh, Bill's the program tonight. I know Bill's the program tonight. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. That's all we don't have anything upcoming no, planned no, yet. No, no. I'm, I'm looking around for ideas for next month, actually. I, I you know, stand up. Stand up. I have been uh, thinking for a while and I'd kind of like to, to uh, do something, some sort of a discussion or group thing about shapes and design, design shapes, how you, how you choose a shape or what you want to turn. I don't really have anything specific on that. But I'm, I kind of have to throw out there whether or not there could be any sort of a discussion among the group next month or at some future time. Anybody willing to give it a shot a little bit, you know, back and forth, not just, not solo, just talking about like it. Anything that you know about shapes, some of the design shapes that you've had trouble with, some that you like, some that you don't like, that sort of stuff. That's sort of what I was thinking about trying to do. I think I saw something, I think I saw something recently on AAW. Uh, talking about uh, design and they, they do every once in a while. I have, I have several books on different design and design shapes. I, I, yeah, I thought I saw that. I'd be yeah. glad to bring in, but uh, I don't want to get up here and start talking about my small amount of design experience and kind of fall flat. So I really, really need some feedback from, from you guys. Can we do that or not bother? Or, I like that. That's right. I think it's so. But I tend to I tend to struggle with that. How, what do I want to do with this piece of wood? Well, and usually I like to see what it tells me it wants to do. That's something that I'd like to try to do. Maybe I'll try to pull some off the leg. Like that happened in the last bowl I was turning. Well, only found one piece of it. I think we ought to try to do that at least. Maybe you know, get some input out from it. Maybe some suggestions on how to do what. What's a catenary curve? Do you know what a catenary curve is? I do. <laughs> what is it? Is that, is that somebody online? You have somebody online. Who's that? Well, speak up. Yeah, speak up. Speak up. All right. I didn't know you could hear me. Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> Who is that? It's Tim Fever. Oh, okay. 
I got my iPods on and I, I wasn't even in the room. <laughs> Why, well, as a as a math teacher, I know a cat Mary is part of a uh, parabola family. It fosters uh, the classic cat Mary would be take and take a look at an electric line when it's sagging between two poles in the summertime, and that's a cat Mary. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's not a it's not a circle. It is not a circle. <laughs> that sort of stuff is, is things that I would, would sort of like to get to talk about back and forth with uh, everybody in the group rather than standing up here and get a dry mouth trying to talk to you guys. But anyhow, you think we ought to give it a shot? Yeah. yeah. The next month, July. Yep. Yeah. Another another thought in a similar vein. Uh, might be some, might be just a good discussion on tools, tool, tool usage, safety. Try to bind that into a single, uh, that discussion into a single meeting topic at some point. You know, when we talk about tool, tools, it takes, it takes hours. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess that's a good thing. Everyone has their own. <laughs> but anyway, that, that's what we'll, we'll try to get into that next month. I'll, I'll maybe start making a list to bring my books in. Design and shapes and that sort of stuff for whatever you may want to turn. Pleasing shapes, ugly shapes. Uh, what do you call them? It's a cat shape or a uh, uh, side curve, curves and all that stuff. But anyhow, that's what we'll try for next week. Next month. July. Okay? All right. Oh, here's a, that's a wonderful yeah. book. That too. I have several. I have several at home that I would bring in. Yeah, that, that goes into a lot of. Them. The one one of them is uh, Mike Darlow, the right. Australian yeah. New Zealand. But he's he's, he's been around for a while. But when when he when Mike Darlow does a book, about half of it is history, and he's been criticized for that. But I think it's pretty interesting if you want to go back to the history of something. Because he, uh, he just wrote a book about chess pieces. About half that book is, is the history of chess pieces. Not, not really turning, but the rest of it is not turning. So I'll bring his book in and a couple of other books. We'll try to do a little bit of a, a discussion on how to design the pieces. Okay? All right, any, anything else? Or we don't have anything really beyond the July then? Not really. Did, I was going to ask how many. Uh, well, actually, maybe you. How many attended the uh, virtual uh, symposium out of? Uh, oh, out of Louisville. Louisville. You did. I did. Frank did. Cody did. I didn't really attend, but I, because I, I was away, but I'm looking at them now. Yeah, you know, watching it. Watch the replays. Yeah. Watching the, the replays of the run and stuff like that. Actually, I think you guys missed something. I was going to ask Toby. Uh, you see the one with the girl who did uh, vaulting, the colors I watched in vaulting? The, well, the what? Colors in vaulting, vaulting so, colors. Uh, Robinson, is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I watched about half of that. I didn't get through it all yet. That, I thought that was pretty interesting because uh, she has a doctorate in, in her subject and she studies fungi, <laughs> funguses. But some of the spalding funguses actually produce their own color. Some of them really, really vivid. And I, that surprised me. I've never seen anything like that. So if you ever get a chance to, to do something like that, uh, or even research it, you like color. So that's natural it's color. Too, totally. so yeah, it's a little more work than I want to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It, it, it was funny because you can too, too complex, huh? Well, you can sort of see the piece of wood with these various colors. Yeah, yeah. It's really kind of interesting. You can buy them from Yeah. I, I do know uh, we had, last night we had uh, our uh, hybrid forum meeting the, with the AAW Tech Committee. And we talked briefly about the, uh, the symposium. And those of you that did watch it uh, live, I know there were there were some issues with some of the audio on one of them. There's a yeah, that dropout, was, that was but nice. the, the video is perfectly fine. Okay. It was just in the stream itself that the, the that was a problem. So 
I thought it was kind of interesting as far as the presentation was concerned. They had three cameras in each room. Yes. And they also had a couple of directors mm -hmm. behind the scene that had two people at tables directing the, the video and one one yep. person on the, the boom camera. Yeah, it was. Uh, to, it's, we had discussed it in our uh, in our tech community for, mm -hmm. and uh, how we were going to pull that off, how how it was going to be done, and uh, yeah, it's frankly sounds like it went rather well. So, speaking of that, I'd like to encourage if any any of you who could uh, try to attend the Mike's uh, symposium here in September. I always enjoy it. I always look forward to it. Yeah, unfortunately for me, I cannot attend because it conflicts with the show. Yeah. But unfortunately, but and they refuse to move the show. The <laughs> Cumberland refuses to change the date of her Apple test for you. Exactly. <laughs> the nerve. Um, did uh, Randy Bob pop on yet? No, but I do have his. Uh... You have the report? Yes. Um, in our checking account, as of May 31st, we had $2,422.73. Yep. Um, we had $2,422.73. There were no expenses for May. There were three deposits totaling $98.64 related to dues. I'm scanning from side to side here as I'm reading this up. <laughs> Uh, we are we are currently collecting 2,023 dues, and keep in mind that those are $25 now. Uh, the easiest way to get your dues to uh, to, uh, to, yeah, to, uh, to us to, <laughs> yeah to the treasurer is to uh, actually mail them to him. Uh, right now, our website is not functional. Uh, you can view it, but uh, the editing functions are all whacked out. So, and Randy's working on that, and we're we need to get shifted off of the current site anyway. But that's uh, coming soon because we got a deadline yep. approaching. For, uh, and we have forty three members to update up. Forty three. Okay. Uh, we also related to Treasury uh, received a check. Uh, came to Troy, he dropped it off for us, um, and heard about the class action lawsuit involving Zoom. We got a $52.22 refund check. Class action settlement check. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah, 52.22. So, uh, I'll get this over to, I'll send this over to Bob to, to put into the account. All right. Uh, and that was all you had then, Tom, too? For now. Program? Yeah, because we got, and, and if you have any ideas or stuff, even for something you want to see, you want to have demonstrated, or you'd like to learn more about, please just let us know. We'd be more than happy to, to figure out how we can pull it off. And if you have something that you would like to demonstrate, absolutely, let us know. You, know, you, don't, you don't have to be super skilled at it. Lord knows I know. Um, do we have something lined up for another uh, hands-on thing in the future? Not yet, but we do We do want to do another skills event uh, at some point. Uh, we just don't have anything really other than we want to do one. That, that's as far as we've gotten with it. So. Is that something you'd like to do again with hands-on? That seems to be fairly popular. I would say it seems to be rather well-received. Um, and, we, and we do it uh, similar to the way we did it the last time, which I think worked out very well. Where we would do it in the context of our meeting, but we would start uh, we'd start earlier, like an hour earlier, to give us enough time to actually get something accomplished. Because uh, in our normal meeting time, which is really roughly an hour and a half that we actually have, that's you, you can't really get a whole lot accomplished in that time. Not when you're dealing with multiple people wanting to look at multiple things. So, um, but yeah, we'll plan that. Uh, I was thinking sometime probably maybe fall, like a, maybe a September October thing. We'll have to we'll have to see what it does. what we find out. What else we find for program uh, stuff? Is that it then, uh, Tom? Yeah. Okay.
Toby, anything from your side of the world? Uh, I got an email from somebody who needs something in, uh, engraved with uh, laser engravers. Is there anybody in here that does that? I thought there was someone at one time. When I put it back together. <laughs> when you do that? <laughs> well, it's kind of together, except for the wiring to the laser head itself. <laughs> I, and the rest of you. No, I, I expanded the size. Mine was only like 170 millimeters square. It's um, larger. Okay. But I don't have the new wire extensions done yet for the laser head itself. So. There's no one else. There's a great guy up in Dalton, Chris Ditlow. I saw you, you mentioned that, but I don't yeah, I didn't know a lot of work for PFA and Net System. Oh, ah, okay. There you go. How, how do I get a hold of him? Uh, good question. I'll, I'll find the contact information. Cool. Email it here. <laughs> Thank you. We appreciate it. Um, all right. Uh, Mr. Laskowski, anything yeah. from your side of the world other than your, uh, by the way, we've got some, uh, what is it, sugar peas they were? Yeah. Sugar peas up here. Yeah, so they want some sugar peas. I think more than I can use today. So, so that's what's in the plastic bag right. sitting over here by my water bottle. I would hate to have to take them home and eat them. Act like a rat. Yeah, well, you know. All right. Uh, I think I handed these out at the last meeting. If there's anybody that's new that doesn't have the Ned Smith Center for Nature and Art uh, event guide for this year, uh, 300 seat amphitheater up there with uh, concerts. And then off the press yesterday, the uh, Ned Smith Nature and Arts Festival, the last Saturday of July. There's uh, pamphlets for that. Please take those for anybody you know that have children. There's 50 activities there that day, all day, all free, except the butterfly house that cost you that. I'm going to set these over here. For anybody, oh, we set these over here by the uh, sugar peas. Not bad. Uh, it's the same guy that does the show at the uh, farm show. It's right on the riverbank. From in the Millersburg to the walk in the Millersburg sign, go down Keystone Park in these lots, walk across the uh, footbridge there. This is a schedule of all the activities, and it, it's a great day. It's a way that we honor the uh, local people for supporting the Nets Smith Center. So it is free admission. There are food vendors, uh, about 50 uh, arts and craft vendors there. John, are you coming up? Did you ever do that there? No. Okay. If anybody that's interested in, in being a craft vendor, they'll see me uh, tonight and I'll get you contact information. Oh, and on my truck. <laughs> I've got two beautiful pieces of crotch wood out of a, a Bradford pair that would make two matched bowls. So I hope somebody can take them and turn two match pieces out of that rather than just splitting it up and not getting that unique situation. And they are rather close in composition. So uh, there's some other uh, Japanese elm out there. I think there's one piece of uh, Colorado blue spruce. Carl had turned a beautiful plate a couple of years ago from that. How can you comment on that in terms of the workability of it? I, I like it. It's easy to work. I mean, it, it's you know, white pine basically it, it, uh, it's easy to work with uh if it's dry you don't have a lot of problem with the sap right but it is sapping now because right. it was cut in the winter it was cold and now it's starting to sap out i did i did the paint it though right when i cut it so uh, it's there and so i'd like that truck to be empty <laughs> before i leave this parking lot folks so I'll bring it on the road next time. So anybody that's interested, see John Thank after you. the meeting and his uh, truck of wood out here and help yourselves. Yep. And, okay. Um, let's see what's on my list here. Oh yeah, I mentioned, uh, I've heard I mentioned earlier about YouTube videos. Club does have a YouTube channel. We have very little on it at the moment, especially very little public on it. 
Um, I do have a stack of videos that need to get edited uh, that we could load up there of uh, meetings mainly. And I'm gonna to try to pull the demonstrations out of the meetings as well as their own videos and get that stuff posted up there um, and get that, get that going. Uh, everything that, or just about everything that's up there at the moment is private, which means you have to know what the link is to get to it. You can't just find it. But I, with the, when we get the meeting stuff up there, I'm thinking the meeting, we could go public with the meetings. Does anybody have thoughts otherwise? What is, is the website officially down? At the moment, our website is, yes. Because I, I've been trying to get in for the last three months, and I can't, you know, I'm told anything about it. <laughs> you, um, you, you can't update anything, but you can display most of the stuff. It won't even take my password. Yeah, you, know, you can't log That's in. That's the part you can't do. You can't you log in. You can't, can't log into the make website. any changes, but you can look at it. But anything that's publicly accessible, you can look at. Who's the one with <laughs> the two of us over here. The two of us over here. Uh, we're actually going to, um, we're working on moving to Club Express. So we have something that's maintainable for the future. We can't guarantee that you're going to have somebody there that's going to want to write stuff in PHP and modify the, do it and modify files and all of that fun stuff at the host level. So, uh, because that's what Joomla's written in. <laughs> and Joomla goes end of life. Uh, the current version goes end of life in August. And the current version and the new version are not compatible. So you can't just move things over. It's a start over and rebuild, which is why we're going to plug Because there we don't have to worry about it. It's much easier. Um, but yeah, that's, that's, the, that's the short version. So I, I know Randy's, Randy's looking to see what he can do to get the site our site, current site working better, but, uh, and he's waiting on something from me now, he asked me yesterday to, or last night to, to pull the database for him. So something I have to do from the host. So I'm gonna get that pulled down and moved over. Email still works though, because so that's same host, but it's a separate, completely separate uh, area. So yes, yeah, so, yeah, so I'll get, uh, once I get my youngest working on editing videos for me, We'll, uh, I'll start getting them posted and we'll send uh, send a message around, send an email out once we have stuff up there that's, uh, uh, that's available to view. So, all right, does anybody have anything else before we go to show and tell? I'll think that is a no. All right, uh, so we want to get, I know Randy wants to get pictures of show and tell. But he's also kind of working the the meeting at the moment, running the, the Zoom for the meeting because yeah, we we both of neither one of us can be two places at once. So when the stuff that we pass around, we can end up with it sitting back there on the salt stop, and Randy can photograph that once we get into the rest of the program. So start over here on this corner, and I would be willing to bet, even though it has no name on it. But because it's purple, that it's Toby's. That is mine. <laughs> yes, it has no name, nothing on the bottom. Uh, yeah, it's not quite cured yet. So I, I usually wait till they're good and hard before mm -hmm. I do anything to them. That's why I don't think anything I have on the audio. So what is this? This uh, is a little bit of spalt and maple. And uh, that's one that, to me, it didn't turn out well. I think it's too dark. The color is kind of muddled. And I usually bring in my nice stuff, but I thought, I don't always make nice stuff, so I want to show that. <laughs> <laughs> the dust off of it. Looks like you turned it into a woman. <laughs> you know, it, if it weren't for the purplish cast to it, because I haven't seen much wall with this purple. Yeah. But yes, you're right. From a distance, it absolutely yeah. does. <laughs> did you, did you bleach that first, Toby? No, I did not. You think maybe that was the issue? Uh, with, uh... I think I just chose the wrong color <laughs> to put on it. <laughs> yeah. All of my pieces, I, I use spray can. Uh, so the people online can see on as well. Triple thick clear coat. I don't remember. Yeah, you can. You get a better idea of its coloring here. Well, it looks better on there. 
So as long as we only look at it through video, we're doing good. Is that what you're trying to say, Toby? Basically. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. How many points? Uh, until it looks good. <laughs> so three to four, probably. The first coat, as soon as you put it on, it basically it gets sucked in. And that's that's really just a sealer coat. So that the next coat you put on doesn't get sucked in. So like, I just go over it quickly with the sealer coat. Next, next day, put another one or two coats on. Sometimes in between, I'll, if it looks like it has little uh, pebbles on it or something, I'll go over it with the, uh, one of those 3M pads mm -hmm. just to smooth it all out and then put the next coat on top of that. And then not, none of those yet that I have buffed yet, but I will also buff them when they fully cure. This 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 finish looks thinner than your past ones. It looks thinner. Yeah, like maybe lighter coats. It could be. Or less coats. Possibly. Okay. <laughs> and and how do you buff them? With the BO buffing system. All three? No, I don't use the uh, the wax. So I just use the the red triple uh, A they call it triple E. Triple E. Yeah. And then the white white, white diamond. diamond. That's all I put on it. What's your speed on that? You know, you pretty say? pretty slow. I have the my nine inch wheels. Uh, I eight, think they're eight, eight inch. Eight. Yeah, I usually do that with the triple E. I usually go uh, between seven and eight hundred. Then for the white diamond, I'll go up to nine hundred a little more. They recommend doing a twelve hundred, and I find it's too easy to put a burn mark on it with going that there. Melted. Yeah. I got. I have to get a speed controller for. For my motor that I use for a buffer, just put it on your leg. That's a pain in the butt. <laughs> that's why I built a buffer. <laughs> it was easier. It's not working yet. Yes. No, that's working. It's just fast. It's, just it's a seventeen twenty five. <laughs> that's way too much. standard seventeen twenty five motor. So it's like another another Toby one. I bet you this is um, Box Elder, isn't it? It is Box Elder. How do I guess that? <laughs> and the red streaks before I got it all ready, plain wood. And before I put any dye on it, I dyed with a little brush, a uh, pretty strong solution of red right over the red that was on mm -hmm. it before. I tried to make it look sort of natural. When you first put it on, it doesn't though. It looks horrible when you first put it on. But then when I put the second coat of the blue over top, it kind of blends in everything. It makes it look like it's like that's the way it grew. I like, I like the little rim you have on it here, too. Ah, that's for next month for the design. That's for next month's yeah. design. <laughs> so we'll see this again is what you're trying to say, right? Yeah. That, that looks more greenish than blue. Did you, did you yellow uh, dye that first? That's, that has an odd mixture of uh, procyon powdered dye turquoise and the, the uh, trans tint blue. So it's some proportion or other, both of those two, on top of the box out, which is sort of yellow. So it gave it that That would that give color. it that green, yeah, because yeah. turquoise, turquoise goes a little bit more green blue. direction. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and I know, yeah, the box elder, the uh, red will fade in the box elder. Right, that's why. Natural I'm red will fade in the box elder after a while. So with coating it like Toby did, that kind of keeps it, uh, a little more permanent. Keeps a little more permanent, a little more visible. And uh, well, I know who turned this, Toby. Um, <laughs> one of your mushrooms. That's that's one of my mushrooms, and that is from a, a Kentucky coffee tree that I grew from seed about 30 years ago, and I cut it down, and that's one of the branches. Uh, it has interesting coloration on the on the inside, and the bark is, is different also. It's it's hard, and it's kind of flakes out a little bit. It's a little like pinkish -ish color here. Is that from the wood or is that? That's the, the uh, Kentucky coffee tree has like a, a dead hole for the whole way up through it. It's like a weed tree. Mm -hmm. And uh, the pith in it is, isn't solid, it's just mush. So I, I put so a CA glue on it to harden it. Okay. And I have some others that, if you look on the bottom of that one, I believe, is that just a hole there? Yeah, just a hole down yeah. here. If that would come out on the top on my next one, if it came out as a whole, I would fill it in with some sawdust or something and then put CA glue on top. So this is the pit, yeah, just with the CA on it. Great, interesting. 
I like the grain. I like the grain up through the stem here. Yeah, yeah I think that the it's color like of a little it. twist. Yeah, and, and then it's not just round; it's jaggedy. Right. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really kind of a. I kind of caught my eye when I picked it up and looked at it. Actually, looked at it. Yeah. Like an I brought a good supply of Asiatic herbs week down previously, mm -hmm. and uh, I haven't seen anybody bring anything in from that. Uh, but that's what uh, Mill Great and I think Toby, you turned some mushrooms on that. Did, that's right? a while back, yeah. Yeah, that, I was just going to say that's Does good. Anybody want some stuff. of that for the next meeting? Because I, I cut a large amount and I didn't carry it all out of the woods, it's still there. I can bring a bunch of that down next meeting if anybody wants it. Is it still in good shape? Because I don't know how long it'll stop. Yeah, and I can cut more stuff. too, because I have to I actually have to cut some for another uh, okay. use. Okay. So it's some hands. I mean, I'm not gonna bring a just so everybody knows it's, it's, it. it's it's not really like a solid wood, it's more like a, a vine type deal where it's a bunch of straws going up through it. So that's hard. Uh, if you decide, if you decide that you want some, uh, that goes for you too on Zoom. Um, just send us an email before uh, before the next meeting. Right. You know, give us a little bit of time. And we'll let and we'll let a week or so. We'll let uh, uh, we'll let uh, John know so he could bring some for the next meeting. But uh, yeah, at least a week's notice. So like by the end of the end of this month, the first week of July, the fourth, somewhere thereabouts. I want to say our our meeting next month is going to be the eighth. I think the eighth is the second. Is it the first one on Tuesday? No. The eleventh. The eleventh. I can never remember. I. I know. And you have meetings. Uh, the through the summer. <laughs> yeah. Hey. <clears throat> and we had another uh, turquoise base. Another turquoise base, uh, same mixture since I had it mixed up there. And I, I usually wait till I have a couple pieces to dye before I do it. And that is a piece of uh, hackberry that Carl gave me about five years ago. <laughs> I find it interesting. This doesn't seem to have taken any dye at all. That's the, I guess, the cambium layer of the pork. Okay. That was on there. So it's, it's real just add, an added feature. <laughs> exactly. They're always featured, right? Yes. I like the little, I like that little oval or teardrop grain there. Which being a tall piece, it kind this of shows that nice. off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, very nice. Like okay. And we've got here that I can't read. Um, you can't read that? KK. Is that what it, I, yeah, it's, it's, just it's a little light. <laughs> so, can you tell us about it, sir? That is a piece of red bud that my uncle gave me. That was turned green Sunday evening. And as you can see, it's now here, finished. We tried the microwave technique on it. Took about 10 or 12 seconds to the microwave at about 30 to 40 seconds a shot. And it's dry. What power? Full power. Full power? Did you put it in a bag or anything or just straight in the microwave? Straight in the microwave. The only problem with going to the microwave is that watch it. Because 30 it's seconds, hot. it's pretty warm. Yeah. I have 40 seconds, you definitely it's out of the microwave and over on the bench. <laughs> so, <laughs> how many times do you sell 30? About 10 or 12. And how long between each one? I was working in my shop, so I really didn't any. <laughs> Well, I need exact seconds. Come on. You don't have to cool off. Everything that, everything that I've, well, there's very little information out on that, is to let it cool off completely and then do it again. Which that size is like 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, 15 minutes, 33 seconds, and uh, 450 pounds. Now, if you watch Richard Rackham just did some of them in one of his latest videos. He had a man for two minutes at a time. Wow. On full power. And when he pulled it out, and he showed it on the video, I mean, he had, I think he even had gloves on. He pulled it out. I mean, there's just steam that's just rolling off. Even uh, at 30 seconds, when you open the door, the steam is coming. I was going to say, go go to like a Walmart or Target or someplace like that. Buy yourself some silicone gloves. 
for like working in. <laughs> no, seriously. Well, yeah. Like you would use for cooking and whatnot. They work great for it. I have a pair of them in the shop specifically for working with either if I try to microwave dry something or if I'm like waxing something or if I'm, uh, you know, anything that I'm working with something hot like that because they're good to like 500 degrees. Yeah, but the question is- And the water cream. Yeah. What's that? Do you, do you know where they're at? As a matter of fact, yes. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're, on the, they're on the Franken up. <laughs> My seriously splatter? modified toaster. What's that? Was there any splatter? Any sure. kind of moisture or stuff that went on the microwave from the wood? This this is not my household microwave. I see. I wouldn't use your home microwave. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, this depends on how well much you like. Years ago, so it does. It does create an odor. Okay. That's oh yeah. This there is some odor to it. Was this microwave dried as well? The smaller one. This was not. Okay. So so this wasn't just turned on Sunday, I guess. No, that was just finished up. All right, send that one around. I kind of thought you made a cord. Yeah, because they, they that's you got to have the voice. Yeah. Okay. Um, I can pretty much guess who did these too. <laughs> so, Troy, you want to tell us? Oh, uh, <laughs> that's a self-portrait. <laughs> <myself. laughs> that's a self-portrait, huh? Yeah, Troy thinks that's a self-portrait. <laughs> I, I figured you probably did for for this part of it, right? <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> So, Carl. Uh, they're both, both of those are pieces of ash. Uh, that one we have there, there's uh, epoxy for the, for the figures. And Turn it around. That... Oh, I have it upside down. There Sorry. You go. There you go. I, I was holding it for the car out of here to see, not the people up on screen. Now you can recognize me there. Yeah, yeah. And the colors are from a craft guy. It's, it's, yeah, I always show side by side there. Yeah, so. Before you go on, I have a question about, for Kirk. Is this your CA finish on here? Could you mention that? I don't remember hearing that. No. That's that's the one. That's one coat by the Parfix thirty four oh eight. Bonex and wax. That's all. The other one is uh, uh, like the epoxy figure in the middle, really cut, and the uh, surfboard is a piece of uh, yellow part, I believe. The red stripes just painted on. Yeah. The milliput did uh, you you dye white, or is that a light blue milliput? It's painted with acrylic paint. Oh, you painted on top of the on okay. top of the milliput. Yeah. So this is all just one color of the milliput. Yeah, the milliput comes in like uh, six or seven different colors. Mm -hmm. uh, probably used white on that one. Sometimes I use the brown milliput. Sometimes I use the light gray. Just depends on what I'm doing. Uh, but that was then painted with the color. I noticed you uh, brought the foot out here onto the surfboard. That really is a little bit there where it actually, and that's that's actually 3D there. That's not just a painted stripe. No, no, no. Did you use milliput for that too, or just for what? The the little bit of a foot here coming out. Probably milliput. Yeah. Very nice. Um, it's all right. The passes around. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Yeah. English ones. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, so while those are while those are making their way around, um, tonight's program, as uh, as has been mentioned, is going to be uh, Mr. Kowski here. It's going to be doing some. Uh, what did you call this? Uh, Round squares a or cube, a cube of circles. A cube of circles. That's it. That's the only... All right, so uh, we've got about 45 minutes ish. That's what we have. Yep. Carl, how long does the milliput take to hard to cure? Okay. Overnight? It starts to get hard after about uh, 12 to 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, it's hard to work with. You've got to kind of work quickly. Uh, I usually have to just sit overnight before I go in. Yes, I would say, you know, probably a couple hours for the hard stuff. Okay. Did this are we up and running? Is that what you want? Okay. All right. What I'm going to uh, talk about tonight is how, how I made these and uh, where the idea came from. 
And I'll start out typically, uh, well, this, this would be the first, first one here. Now, why did that go blank? That was me. You? All right. Oh, okay, good. Uh, first, I just want to say uh, one thing. We have some new people here. And uh, just, I'll give you kind of like a quick bio of myself, but it won't be anything in detail. Uh, it'll just be about like turning up. I'm an engineering background in bridges. That was my thing. And you'll see, I tend to do a lot of drawings, but, but that is done by a lot of people who aren't engineering backgrounds. It, you know, that's just something, it's handy. Uh, but uh, I started turning about uh, 2002. I was one of the first members, uh, charter members of the uh, club in uh, Woodcraft store up on Eisenhower Boulevard. Um, at the time I was still working, I retired 2004. Then I decided I would go back to work another job for three more years. Uh, so during that time, I, I bought a lathe, a uh, small lathe, a uh, Delta MIDI that you'll see now has variable speeds. Mine has the, uh, it's a bench top lathe, small, 10 inch capacity. Um, I turned something, my neighbor had a, uh, an old shopsmith set up as a lathe. So I, I turned something there and that gave me the impetus to, that, hey, I wanted to continue this. So at that, at that time, uh, I didn't, uh, how do you say, I just had the lathe, I had tools, and I had a chuck. So that meant that I didn't have a grinder, I didn't have a, uh, I didn't even have a chainsaw or a bandsaw. So I was very, very uh, elementary starting out. So. Whenever I did something in those early days, I would buy the chunks of wood from Woodcraft, the little things. So I was stuck with working with that piece, you know, so you have to come up with something. You don't have a whole tree or, you know, you get your design ideas like Tom's going to talk about. But, but uh, so I was stuck with that. And, and I did little bowls and learned how to use a bowl gallop and stuff. But... Uh, Eventually, you know, as time went on, I got a bandsaw and, you know, I did get a, uh, and sharpening my tools in the early days, I used a little diamond hones and you can only do that so long, but, but it, it got me through those initial periods. And, and at the time I did a lot of, uh, uh, reading, we didn't have YouTube then, and they had a lot of, uh, different, uh, books that uh, introductory to wood turning and uh your laptop went to sleep oh it did okay scary okay. screen went dark all of a sudden yeah all right well but uh that's that got me going and eventually after 2007 i had a uh, i got a powermatic and finally had a place to set up my shop in a shed, which I kicked out the uh, bicycles and lawnmowers and stuff, you know, and, and got more power to it. That, that when I got my uh, paramatic, I needed 220, so I had to get an electrician. So, you know, there were some investment pieces coming, and at the same time, I was, you know, getting more wheat box, little bowls, and, and things. And, and I really love it. I really, really over the years now you would think what is it 20 21 years or better since i started this and i still consider i'm not uh entry level but i'm nowhere way up for somebody who's grinding away at a job you know i, I uh turn uh now more infrequently but uh, during certain periods of time, I uh, got at it pretty good. And once you're in it, you're, you're going at I love it. And uh, I just said that during that 21 years, and when I retired, I ended up having five weddings 
and seven grandchildren. <laughs> so I can tell you that things are, it, it's just crazy. You know, I mean, busy and, you know, with things and wood turning. And, and I'm so grateful to have wood turning during the pandemic and Zooming, you know, that these guys, the tech guys, have stepped up with uh, the Lancaster Club, uh, John Kelsey. He runs a coffee hour every Thursday at 10 to 11. And if you want to get on it, you can, you can uh, check in the Lancaster uh, Club uh, website you know, and request from John if you want to get on it, he'll send you a link. But we get 40 people, 50 people. They're from Canada, England, Germany, uh, all over. They get Richard Rafael. They get some of the big names to you know, get on and talk. And uh, they're wonderful. So that, that will lead me into where this uh, Cuba Circles came from. Uh, my experience and what I've read, I don't sell my work, you know, in craft shows and stuff. I mean, it, sometimes I get requests, somebody would want something, you know, I might sell it, you know, sell something or make something specific for them. But basically, I make stuff that I like and enjoy and make, or it collects in our house or friends and families and you know, it gets distributed, but uh, so that's that's basically what I do. So this these this Cuba circles this uh, the idea came from a couple weeks ago. Uh, a professional wood turner out of North Carolina, John Duxbury, and at one time we almost had him. He was coming through, and I sure I know him now from seeing him on Zoom. He's an incredible demonstrator, Turner, and he's an old guy. I mean, he's pretty cool. But he showed a couple of weeks ago this, the, the cube. And that just, uh, in, in my experience, uh, and I've read it, you're not, I'm, I'll make a statement, you're not selling, you're not infringing on somebody's professional, their livelihood, but it's kind of wonderful for me at, at times now, as of late, to more or less try to do what uh, what they have done, or try to try to do it, you know. And and it's sometimes it's very difficult. And that's what I'll go through with this. Um, Jim Duxbury, um, I can't remember the joke that they said, but. Uh, I don't know if you remember if you saw that when he when he showed the his cube and he says, "Oh, it's a three inch cube and it has a two and a quarter inch diameter." And the hard part was cutting it with the table saw. But somebody on the, on the somebody on the Zoom thing asked him, "Well, how do you sweep it? You know, where do you get these like the Tom there, the design ideas?" And, and one of them, it was either Jim or somebody, said he sleeps with his head three inches off the pillow. And I, I thought, boy, this is, this is funny. Yeah, I mean, it's cool. So I had to try it. So to find some pieces of wood that you have that are dry in your shop, this is a piece of cherry, and this is a piece of some type of uh, maple that's got a lot of... Uh, curl in it or whatever you, you, you call it, interest. And, and he just spoke on there, you know, a three inch cube, you cut it and then you hollow it out. Well, I was curious, um, you know, to do this. So like I say, I don't know if you can see that down there. He did say one of the major things uh, you need to make a template. So this project would be, I would say, a skill builder, a skill builder, or uh, for you know people learning and uh, to try it with the finesse, you know, of your hands and stuff. Uh, so, but anyway, what I did, I went, drew this thing up, and you have to make a cardboard template. Um, 
you really need that. But I, I had to draw it just to see what's going on in there. I mean, there's some intersections here that that when you do do it, and if you do it accurately, a circle will appear. And when I say accurately, um, it all depends on, on how you cut it, how accurate you make your cube. And I, I have a good table saw, 50 year old table saw. And uh, let's see, <coughs> where we go here? Um, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna move on from this. Uh, Let's see. Bill, can you pass one of those around? Bill, can yeah. you pass one around while you're talking? Yeah, yeah. In fact, I'll pass them both. Um, take that one. This one here, you'll notice I uh, chipped off the, the corner. Whenever you're doing this and trying to clamp them and don't over clamp, you know, it's kind of a finesse thing. Uh, I have powdered brass and CA glue. Use some tape to make like a dam, put the powder in there. And I've, I've done that before with different little inserts, but uh, just, just to try to do it. And uh, these are covered or, uh, with, uh, what is it? The hand rub poly, what do they call that? Rub, wipe, wipe, on poly. wipe on poly and black gesso. You know, he had done, I thought the black gesso you know, kind of, kind of shows pretty, awesome. pretty neat. <laughs> there you go. But, wise choice, Bill. Wise choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, but to hold it, uh, but I, I, like I say, I think it's a great skill builder. You, like I say, I, I, I haven't. Uh, you know, I don't run this thing every day and do all this. So when I'm doing it, it's kind of like I'm tiptoeing through it. You know. But uh, anyway, this is a talon chuck uh, with the uh, wider jaws on it. It just makes it. And in this view, uh, the cherry one was the first one I made. That was a test one. And you'll see what I did. I drilled a hole. You can mark out this so you can get the, the centers uh, accurately. And I thought like we do in bowls, we drill holes in bowls you know, down the, the center to give you a, a, a relief point, you know, to when you're uh, scooping the bowl out. Uh, that was kind of a mistake because what happens when I, I tried drilling them on a, like a drill press and uh, I guess I got some drift and and like I say, this, this thing has to be accurate. You, you have to cut three table saws or 10 inch blade. You might get three and a quarter maximum and you have to adjust it. And uh, I'm not a flat wood guy, but I, I messed around over the years using it. And it's tricky because this wood was very hard, very dry. The blade was clean, blade was sharp. But but still, the end product, you know, you have to get a, a accurate uh, an accurate cut. Oh, there's there's where I put the CA glue and the. You can see I used the the blue <coughs> marking tape on it. But it, this the uh, cutting, um, you'll you'll end up with these holes but you'll need to have some kind, it won't be, it'll be like a reamer, but it, you'll make up your own tapered plug like to kind of even it out a little bit. But if it's really done, if you were machining in metal, I thought, gee, a guy with metal, you know, they would come out perfect. But there we are working with wood and it's this, and you're measuring, trying to get centers and trying to six sides, you know, to come together. It, it was it was pretty challenging. Now this one, this is the maple piece that is going around, and I just used a, a carpenter's awl to more accurately uh, position the uh, pin because or the hole there because when you put it in the uh, uh, chuck and you bring up the tailstock, you know there's we lose a lot of. Uh, 
accuracy. I mean, this isn't metal machining. You know, you bring it up and kind of tighten the jaws and and not too tight. But um, there's another one being held there. And this is applying the uh, gesso to the inside. And there we're holding. Now there's one one scoop cut out. Now you can see, you know how this is held. And by the time you get done turning this, you're basically the sixth one. You're turning like a, a frame that's pretty well hollowed out. And you can't you can't. Uh, when I say uh, I, I like to, you'll use you'll hear the term hog out. And, you know when you're doing bowls and making chips fly and I love that stuff. And and with this, you you best be careful, you know, and, and get to that. I had to put a this is the second time around. So I knew better not to use a, a pencil line to mark. And then I used uh, calipers to make sure that I was two and a quarter, actually it, it was two and three eighths. It, it actually got a little bigger. So they all have to be equal, but go ahead. What size gals did you use? Now that was, I was gonna get to that. The, on, the, uh, on the first one that I did, that's cherry. Now that's different, you know, that cherry is different from that grainy maple. So I was using a half inch bowl gouge on that, a Thompson bowl gouge. And that seemed to do quite well. I could get in there and it didn't grab too much. But when I tried the half inch bowl gouge on this one, it, it, it grabbed, my, oh my God, I'm, you know, it's gonna go. <laughs> but uh, what I ended up doing was using the uh, David Ellsworth, the five eighth inch, the big bull couch. And that did it. But I used, when, when you come out, you're using a full cut. You know, you can do some of, you know, scooping out, but the refinement, uh, the final refinement when you're putting the template in there, you have to take real light, real light fine cuts. And, and uh, David Ellsworth's uh, bull gouge, you know, has like, they're, they're almost three quarter inch or whatever. The, the wings come back so you can come back with a, a light a light pullback you know just just touch it and you keep trying with the template the same oh way. that's a pain in the butt <laughs> and that's what i'm saying skill and you know you know I, that that took time but it was better on the second one but this one there yeah, you can see there they start to thin down you know their uh, <clears throat> the materials being removed. There it's, there it's turning. And there, this, let me see here. This is something. Did any of you, did any of you ever try this sitting on the ways of the lathe? You ever, never did that? That's, an yeah. That's where I saw it. <clears throat> and I've, done that ever since i've seen him but i try it when i if i'm leaning over and the way my lathe is set up i don't have room in my shop to bring it at the end to end turn and you know like to come in from the end maybe a little you can hold your arms better so if i'm out there you know this is this is no good you know you want to and and you'll get catches but so I'll sit up there like that and I can, I can, it's not too bad. And that, what you call it, didn't put me in the back there either. So <laughs> but I, I have an extension on my lathe bed. That's why I can do that. But it's not too bad. But that's okay. There's some chips flying. Yeah, that's the Ellsworth. Who's, who's doing the photography for you? My wife. Yeah, I I tried to set up my camera on a tripod. And I said, "Oh man, this is this is." So I had to go. Come on out. <laughs> she helps out like that. And there's one there. That and this the the holes are uh, 
the second one that I had done, it's much more accurate than the first one. So the holes were more uniform because if this thing drifts, you're over just a 16th or 30th second, whatever, whatever it is, it can cause the holes to be smaller or larger. But uniformity, but, but uh, this Jim Duxbury, uh, he does, uh, what do you call them? The kaleidoscopes. He's in the kaleidoscopes, the tubes and stuff. That's, but he does all, everything else. Go ahead, Tom. I, I bought a copy of Jim Duxbury's video of his instructions on how to do a kaleidoscope. Oh. Put it, I think somebody already checked it out. It's in the, it's in the really? library. Yeah. It's a permanent collection. Yeah. I, I bought the uh, DVD <coughs> and a copy of the plans. So I'm keeping the plans for myself. Oh, okay. Cool. You can, Jim, do it. Jim Duxbury's uh, website is called, uh, I should have written it down, Dux. Google Jim Duxbury. Duxbury. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, he's, he's a cool, pretty cool guy. You know, a lot of them on there, they're really, there's some real fine turners. And you can learn from them. That's my thing that, uh, you know, learn from these people. Enjoy what, you know, what you're doing. And there, that's the, the finished pieces that you see going around. But uh, whenever you sand on these things. I always use, if you guys have a good piece of flat board that you know is perfectly flat, but I have a little piece of flat steel and I put my sandpaper on that and I kind of like lap it. I call it lapping a little. I guess that's the machinery term. But, but that's that's what I uh, did. Any, any questions on Go ahead. What kind of a finish did you put on there? And how did you apply it without getting it on the black? Well, that, that was very tricky. <laughs> <laughs> In the one picture here, you might you might see I used the uh, um, rubber uh, brushes there. There, you can see see the rubber brush. Now, that's a gesso in that uh, little yeah. plastic container. But trim the Trim the one inch wide uh, foam brush and they'll throw away. So just dip it and gesso. I never used gesso before, but it's kind of lumpy paint. But that's the black, right? Yeah, black. Yeah. What about the finish on the wood itself? The other one was uh, used a, an old undershirt, cotton shirt that's worn out, wrap it a couple of times, and that's a hand uh, rubbed poly finish. Polyurethane finish. Did you put the poly on first and then do the gesso? Gesso first. Gesso first. Yeah. And you can, if you take the gesso, and I'm still pretty steady at most of the time, but you know, you have to drag it around, be careful. But, but it, it worked pretty much. But I thought that's, that's an interesting. Project. There's another one I saw the guys, the guy from Baltimore um, on the uh, coffee hour club that Lancaster Club has. He was turning a, a square bowl, but it's not square or a square platter. It's kind of rounded. And I, I started to do some drawings on that. And he did. You know, it's not like a square like a square platter, you know, like this, you know, it would be, it has some radiuses in it that he, so, so whenever you see stuff like, you know, pick it up, challenge yourself to, to do it, you know, to have some fun. I, I, I like doing this. So how did you sand this? In other words, by virtue of that being a hemispherical, Oh, I mean, you wouldn't be. Yeah. Oh, good point. Good point. I I couldn't. I didn't. Okay. I, I didn't. Didn't sand the inside. The okay. only the only thing that uh, I made like a, a tapered uh, plug, and then I hot glued sandpaper on it. You know. And then just by hand to, or... to get the holes to to round the uh, yes. 
the edges of the holes because some, you know, had some tear on them. And when you turn, oh, the turn on this thing, that's another thing. You, you'll have fun. I, I think this is for, it's for everybody. You crank your speed up, you know. Now, my lathe doesn't, uh, it doesn't have a readout. I have an earlier model. It'll tell you how many RPMs. But I have it on the high speed end of it. You know, it's like a low speed, high speed. Well, the high speed will go up to 3,000 something. So I was probably in the end when you're turning the sixth side um, up uh, maybe 2,000, 2,200, somewhere in there. My machine will whine, you know, whining up. And, and when this is spinning around, it's kind of like, uh, what do you call it? Vacant space. Uh, ghost. Ghost space or something. Uh, you're voice. turning air turning air because it's, you know, got a lot of holes in it, mm -hmm. you know. So oh. you don't dare push, you know, you don't, you just kind of lightly, you know, and, and just get it. it. It's it's good when you get it done and then you get, you know, you made it. You know. <laughs> so, yeah. I, but okay, that's any more questions on that? Or, go ahead. You started, uh, did you do the two end grain parts <coughs> first? I, I didn't uh, check which one I was doing first. You mean on the, on the cherry? Well, either one. Well, this one is mixed grain. I don't know what this was. <laughs> This grain, uh, so it's still, you still, it's still a long grain piece. You would have two ends of that are all are end grain. Yeah, it could be. I, I couldn't tell. This one was wild. That's why I, I switched from a half inch full gouge to Ellsworth's <coughs> five eighths or whatever he calls it. Did you try scraping? No. no. But you were basically scraping. With a, a scraper, a scraper might get you in there, but this is hard, dry. That's perfect for, scraper. for scrapers. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes I use scrapers on bowls and that. I don't, I do, but not all the time. But yeah, with something like this, um, the gouge cut this pretty good, the, the Thompson gouge. This might have been more soft than the grain in there. Well, it's, it's a different type of tree, and this this was harder. And with the Thompson gouge, it was, and I sharpened them, and it seemed to want to grab. And your your circle that you're using on the inside, are you actually made a cutout for that? I assume you took a complete circle and cut that in half, or not? No. Template. What the trick of this this whole thing is <clears throat> that template. Right. You, you put the template in, and the first one you cut. Uh, How deep is your template? Um, it's half of a half of a circle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and the diameter on these went from two and a quarter to uh, two and three eighths, I think. <clears throat> there, you can see. On this view, <clears throat> there's no no circles or no you know it's just one. But when you cut the one that's facing here, and you're going to go in, it'll make one one circle in that top one now. And what you're looking for accuracy on all all the six sides accuracy of the points so that those circles come out uniform you don't cut them now i did take a template thing and kind of like sand them a little bit because they would tear but they're thin you know they're like 16th of an inch on the ends but, but yeah that's Can I see that template? you know I, don't I, you have your template i didn't bring the dang template but it's shown on the <laughs> Let me see here. First, yeah, first, first order. That template cannot be half. You can see it there too. too. Otherwise, your otherwise yeah, your yeah. middle would be gone. Half of that, half of that circle. No, can't be. 
Uh, so we have it's, not, it's not three inches. The box is three inches. inches. See, the box is the box is three inches. So the depth of your cut down there is about a third. Okay, a third coming in there, a third coming up here, and you've got a third in the middle that remains. You can't go half. You can't go half of this depth. Otherwise, you'd be cutting that center right out of that shower. Okay. Yeah, that could got it. Stayed in there. Or do we have to put you back on night shift? <laughs> 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 That's why, that's why I answered the I understand what he said. When, when the template is critical. Yes. It has to. Yes. So it can still go in quite a way. Yes. About, the same. about a third of the width. It's the same size as on the outside. This. Don't contradict me now. It's not. It's that. Because the Yankees aren't going any place. I know. So you would work on, yeah. on one, yeah. I mean, yeah. one surface or it's whatever until you were done. Complete one. <laughs> okay, and then you swap yeah. that. So, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. so then you have to reset. Exactly. Okay. Reset the thing in the jaws, bring the tailstock up, and line it up. You know, and like the first one I had done, I had a bigger hole in there, and there was some. That, when I was using the drill press, you know, I I got some off of the actual center, you know, where the lines intersect. Did you want to, once you got going though far enough to where you weren't okay? So you you have done several of these. And you're lining up the next one. Let's see if I'm even thinking this through correctly. I guess if you're starting initially, you would be lining up with the tail stop. Never mind. Yeah. yeah. I was thinking that if you already had a partial circle for it, but you wouldn't. Yeah. Now, basically, it's a half, uh, half circle mm -hmm. that you're taking out. And on, on this view here, you can see where the uh, circles intersect. And if you drew a, uh, a line right across, it looks like a flying saucer on there, you know, that little thing, and measure that distance, this is full size, and you'll get the width, or yeah, the width of one of these holes. That's what that means. Right, right. Yeah, so from the drawing there to three inch, three inch cube, and then the, the, set, the semicircle is an inch and an eighth. So the radius of that circle, that's your depth. And the quarter. diameter is two and a quarter. Two and a quarter. So, the, oh. so your radius is half of the diameter. Okay. So it's, it's half of that circle. But since you're going only two and a quarter in your diameter, you're not going to be cutting that. It's like Troy said, you're still going to have that piece in the middle. But you're not cutting the whole way through that. Uh, you're not cutting half the width of, of the cube. Half the diameter of the circle instead. Okay. A lot of the understand it. <laughs> that, that was a good project. If you have a good table saw, that that even helps. Yeah. To me, that was the hard part. You know, trying to cut that. Well, if you want to talk about your egg cups a little bit, to, to anybody else? Want to know about the eight cups? Yeah, I'm going to go into the eight cups. Oh, okay. Yeah, I have a whole other. Are we, we're done with the cube. Are we still? We got about 15. Okay. Oh, that's good. We can do that. On these uh, eight cups here, uh, these are done by a, a master turner. He passed on here, I think, over a year ago, Stephen Hogbin. And uh, John Kelsey on our Lancaster Coffee Hour um, was a good friend of his. He's listed in this book. And when I saw this, uh, my wife does Pisantis. She, I, think, I don't know where she got these. She buys them. Some are real eggs, hand blown and by uh, Ukrainian, she's Ukrainian. This one I turned, it's hollow and there's a. Uh, uh, 
BBs in there, I think, BB gun BBs or whatever. But when I saw this and I read, he started out with the eight inch square, one inch thick board. And, you know, that's what he started out with. So that's all I had from here. There's no plans in here on how to do it. But I thought, how did he do that? You know, and uh, what you what you see here, and this is funny. Um, this one here, this, yeah, this is the this is the uh, original from from Stephen Hogben's design, and this get this this was up at the uh, uh, farm show this year. I had it up there, and uh, Tim had it for till I was able to get it sometime mm -hmm. months later. In the meantime, I had I was going to make three of these. So guess what? I was doing this. It's turned exactly the same as that one, but whenever. You know, I, when I was sanding these things, I put them on. I had that piece of steel and sandpaper, and you go through your grade, grades. You know, this has to be kind of honed a little bit, you know, to get get it to match. I'll pass it them around. But you know what I did? I used tight bond glue, tight bond glue. Now I didn't have this. I didn't look at this. It was just old memory. So when I glued it together. I glued it wrong. <laughs> when I, when after, you know, when I saw it, I thought, oh, I'm done. You know, so what do I do? Do I, do I want to cut it? You know, take it and turn it like this one and re glue it and put it together. And I thought, nah, that's, 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 nice just, that that's just me. And, you know, that's what, that's what we do. I mean, that this guy is an artist extraordinaire. And well, right. the, the one that is done correctly has holes on each side, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I thought that you wanted to put the eggs in there. How do you put the eggs in the holes on the side? Lots of sticky food. <laughs> but not both. That, the that's same the, that's the artist, but you, all right, let me, let me go back to this thing here. Let me, let me bring it up. You, you guys saw. Don't let them shake you up. <laughs> no, they're not, they're not. In spite of trying hard. <laughs> Zoom two, okay. See the one you did, you did second, Bill, you could put the eggs both at the top, right? You yeah. The first one too, though. Yeah. Pretty okay. closer together. What his interpretation? I, gosh, only you know, you know, you don't really know. I mean, that's 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 the type of turner this fellow is or was. A good uh, he he makes a walking bowl, which I'd like to do. Trying to get Troy to challenge Troy to do it, but uh, he's really way 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 out. You know, in the field, there's extremes, and we're in here somewhere. And, but but this is this was cool. But but I thought with the way that turned, I'll leave it. But uh, okay, let me let me start here. I got a couple of slides, and we'll try to get it. All right, here's this famous table saw here. Um, these pieces are eight inch square. Uh, and this is bloodwood. This is bloodwood. There's no finish on this. These are just sanded down to, I think, 600 or whatever. And uh, buff. I, I buff them with, uh, I'm not sure, it wasn't white. It might have been the red, red rouge or something that I have on my wheel. But if you just touch it and zoom, it, it, uh, it buffs up real nice. Um, Let's see here. And the table saw accurate cutting, but I would never, I would, if I would ever do this again, I won't ever, but I would use a solid piece. But what I got here were, uh, I guess they might've been three and a half inch pieces that I bought here. 
and they four us from the sides so I could pull them. Well, you grew them and they tend to do everything and not too tight and all this stuff, but you gotta have good, uh, a good piece to work with. Otherwise you're gonna be sanding. All right, let me see if I can get this. Now that's Hogben's, Stephen Hogben's book that I have here. Uh, now this is, you use those, uh, I don't even know what you call that rubber, that face plate. What do you call it? Cold, cold jaws. Oh, cold. Okay, this this was a small one that I used initially. You could use it uh, on my little uh, Delta mini lathe, which is a 10 inch, I think, uh, in my, my uh, this one is 20, but this is, this is okay. It just fit this, but uh, well, that's the point. Now I'm, I'm trying to see where I have, you can see, you know, you see various cuts uh, in this. This whole project, yeah, there you go. Uh, templates. You, if, when you look at this, you have to make a template to guide yourself. Now your template is just by eye from what he has, you know, so that that's as best as you can do. Um, but you have to give uh, this this opening on the uh, left here will become one of these, you know. And and as we as we go through this, yeah. Now there's that's pretty much the completed completed piece. Now what happens is to do this, this is uh, you have to turn on the backside. Well, now how do you turn on the backside if you can't see the front side because the front side is on the back of the cold chuck. So that it, it, it comes into making uh, markings, uh, layout, you know, I mean, you, you have to, you know, some line pencil work uh, to lay it out. And then, th yeah, this is what, this is a, this is a, a, a drawing of it. Uh, Kind of hard to see. This is a plan view laid down flat, and of course you can you have to have a compass and lay the whole thing out on that. And then you can see there's a section AA cut through the middle, and that's where you can develop your template. It's a zoom on. Okay, square. Okay, square. Yep. Now what? That makes it bigger. That makes it just that you're seeing that one. And there oh, you I go. See. You can zoom it in a little. Okay. Oh, that's good. Now, about five, five ish minutes in. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's how you'll develop when, when you go to turn this, you have to know where the deepest part, and that, that's another. Still, you know, that the depth is the depth, the high part is the high part, and somewhere you're in between. So you got to be careful, you know, to follow the template and take off a little more. Is that your engineering drawing of the project? Yeah, I did a lot of drawings yes. in the <laughs> early days. Uh, we didn't have to in the corner. Does it take you longer to do the drawing or do the project? No, <laughs> no, no. no, no. <laughs> No, I, I can actually I, I still have that set up in my downstairs that I, I still can do it. That's where this came in. Let oh, me ask if you have an actual drafting table at home. You can do these on. Yeah, I have it and oh, so. the old mechanical uh, <laughs> machines. When I started out, we used T squares. Okay. <laughs> that was that was weird. I mean but I still prefer to draw that way. Then the Jacobs, Jacobs parallel rule. You, mm -hmm. Any of you are in that. Yes, I do. Okay. Yes, I do. I think I do. And then the, the machinery, the those are, oh, they're so good. It's like you're going with the L, you know, and it's so much better. I had one of those. I used to do a lot of for contractor uh, house plans in the old days. And 
I retired Tad was infants. It was coming in. I had a couple weeks training to kind of understand what they're doing, but I never, never got it. I, I really wished I did, and, you know, but uh, no, we, we did the same way. I always said like George Washington, you know, those, I mean, how it was presented. And it's amazing, you know, that everything they did, they did then. Now it's, it's, it's really out there. And there's another layout, you know, on there. Uh, you have two sides of this. Uh, and this would be the back side. You, you turn, if you, when you look at this, imagine that the, the piece that you're seeing here uh, will be flat against, and then you have to turn this other half of this. It, you know, it has to, it has to match that. And that, that can be a little tricky. I think that's, that's one there. Yeah, there you're putting it together. Now see that there, it's on the steel plate. Uh, let me see if I can bring that back up. Where's that square again? No, you're already full screen. That is, just you full is screen. it? Okay. But use there it's on that little steel plate. Use the wheel on your mouse. And, and you can see there, uh, the one side is turned, you know, it has all this indentations. And then the back side of it is turned a certain distance there too. It's actually, I don't know, thinner than that, but I don't know. Yeah, putting it together. Yeah, this is the original one. That's this one. The one you did the right way. Correctly, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's next level. Yeah, you, you can see Dremel, uh, oh, tight yeah. bond, and it, it was a challenge to do that. Is that it? Yes, that's uh, somebody going off. <laughs> Amen. This is no, the that's good. And this is uh, on the bottom, original piece uh, created by. <clears throat> Stephen Hogbin, 1975, he did it, Egg Cup. And I did this 2022, and it's Bloodwood, Bloodwood. I never worked with that stuff before, and it's it's like uh, you're working with uh, powdered red dye. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I don't really care to do that. but And it is about, about that time, though. What? About time to wrap. Yep. All right. I think that's it. Any questions or? So in essence, this was one piece that you cut for. I mean, cut into yeah, four. Yeah. One, one piece. One uh, piece. You cut into four pieces. Yes. Okay. And then. Yep. Yeah. One inch thick, eight inch square. Okay. And then lay it out accordingly to. I mean, you can see what his. Uh, Yep. What his looked like, and he had some kind of weird Australian wood or something. I think he had. But, <coughs> but yeah, that that was a, an interesting thing too. And my, like I say, my wife does the. She likes the Pisantes collect some. I've done some eggs, and that's a, a challenge too for uh, newbies and for learning and, and try and hollow it out, you know. And there's, good, you want to see that? Or yeah, I, can can, it. Oh, I have, you can bend uh, little screwdrivers and sharpen little, you don't have to buy them. Well, they sell to you, but you can. Make your own little tools. Make your own and grind them. <laughs> but make them, that, that's the, uh, how do you say? Your eye and the egg, the egg <clears throat> shape and stuff. Try to yeah. try to get the right, you know. So which came first, the egg or the egg hole? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. That, you got it. That's a good one. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Appreciate good. it. Yeah. Yeah.
for the weekend, uh, we'll have a meeting again in July, second, second Tuesday as always. Uh, if you do want any of the, um, what did, what, what was, what did John say? Right? You're fine.